Welcome. My name is Keith Stewart. I'm a physician and myeloma doctor at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm joined today by my colleagues, uh, Professor Kenneth Anderson from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, Professor Gareth Morgan from the University of Arkansas in Little Rock, and Professor Jesus San Miguel from the University of Navarra in Spain. And we're here in Boston at the conclusion of the Myeloma 2016 meeting, which was really a, a very intense day and a half deep dive into the science, biology, and new treatment paradigms for multiple myeloma. So I'd just like to start by maybe asking each of you to just focus on your highlight from today's sessions and what you thought was the most important takeaway message from the meeting. And maybe we'll start at the end with uh, Dr. Sam Miguel. Okay, I think today has been all a really exciting day. We have heard about new ideas on genomics, on the clonal evolution, but particularly, I think uh, the session on the emits and the novel mechanism of action of the emits, uh, we started to use emits without knowing really how they work. Then they come the story of the cerebellum, and this is already an old story because there are so many new ideas about the mechanism of action that I think is fascinating. Also, uh, I think the checkpoint inhibitors are open also new avenues for treatment and all the new drugs that are being, uh, the, the, the presentation by Ken Anderson, I think was also fascinating because uh, this is open also new avenues for combinations. Well, since you picked on uh, Ken here, tell us about your talk and what you discussed and what you think is exciting. Well, I'd mention one quick thing about the IMID mechanism that I think is really quite neat, and I think you do too. Yeah. Um, as Jesus uh, mentioned, uh, the IMIDs bind to Cerebron, which turns on a natural degradation system in ubiquitin-3 ligase, and Icarus 1 and 3 are degraded in myeloma. That has been exploited. So now there are new medicines being made that turn on the same ubiquitin-3 ligase degradation system with a linker, so-called degronimids, to degrade the substrate that you might want. Yeah. And that's a whole new paradigm. If that should work out, that you could actually degrade a protein that causes disease, that's really special. Um, I think that, that really, that to me, that was one of the, it's not really specific just to myeloma, but a whole new way of discovering no. drugs to degrade proteins instead of targeting them. It's that's that's, right. fascinating. Right. I mean, I, I mentioned a couple of new targets. Um, on the one hand, I followed on an Enrique Ocio's wonderful uh, presentation about panabinostat studies, and I talked about a more selective um, HDAC6 selective inhibitor. But I really wanted to do that, not because of its effect necessarily on the tumor cell, but one of the themes of this meeting was the immune effects and unanticipated, but nonetheless very real, changes on the target and in the effector cells that may actually make this class of agents, the HDACs, also uh, immunomodulatory. And then I tried to say something about the genomics, meaning genomics is so complicated in myeloma, constitutively and ongoing DNA damage, but if we can exploit the abnormal biology, turn on natural death pathways, block stress responses, for example, that are the result of this aberrant genetic program, that to me is the future of using genomics to target the abnormal biology. So, so for me, it was, again, all about mechanisms of, of action. And we're at the end of probably 20 years of, of work looking at the mechanism of action of, of different drugs and, and understanding the immune system. And so we're starting to be in a position where we can use that information now to target therapies and define combinations of therapies. So you maximize response. And then when you're in a minimal residual disease state, that you can use the immune system to overcome the cells that are left in the, in the bone marrow. And economically and from a patient perspective, getting people into the maximum response and keeping them in that for the rest of their lives is what we talk about with, with cure. And, and I think we're there or, or thereabouts. We just have to apply these uh, concepts now over the next five years and I think we'll make huge progress. So I think, uh, and regarding the immune system, and there is an idea that is coming back frequently to my mind when I am in front of a patient, and is the the B cells 
the preservation of the immune system, particularly on the B cells. When you have a myeloma patient that may have bone disease, but if they have a preservation of the normal immunoglobulins, mm -hmm. the polyclonal immunoglobulins, usually these patients really do, do much they better. Do much better, yeah, for much sure. Much better. <laughs> and th this has been a reality for years, mm -hmm. and we have ignored it. And now we are mm -hmm. going back again to all this. You know, could I just mention, I think one of the things that my um, most promising idea, I guess, or theme here is that the picks up on yours, uh, Jesus, meaning an immune response in patients, the, him or herself, against their own myeloma. Yeah. And I do think there's the potential, you know, we didn't talk a lot about vaccines here, we talked a lot about other things, but getting a tumor selective response that could even be a memory phenotype, then do that early on in smoldering myeloma and we could really make an impact. So I think the, the potential, especially Targeted therapies on the one hand, but immune therapies on the other is just unprecedented. And just, I was struck, but yesterday we heard a lot about T cell function. If I was struck today by two presentations on what I'd call um, chronic inflammation or inflammatory responses, one of which was just fascinating, which is that a lot of our patients with monoclonal proteins seem to be reacting to uh, lipids in the circulation as sort of a chronic antigenic stimulation manifested with the, the primordial example of Gaucher's disease where there's this excess lipid buildup and they have a 30 times higher instance of myeloma, which I didn't know till today. And then uh, Dr. Casey's presentation where she showed that you can actually stimulate the tumor cell to produce an inflammatory response which attracts just like a chronic inflammatory cell is then engulfed by phagocytosis. And I thought that was just a yeah, whole new really. uh, spectrum of things yeah. we've never really discussed or thought about uh, harnessing. So um, when Dr. Dispensieri uh, presented uh, data with her uh, technique to detect minimal residual uh, disease, it was the uh, ability of that sort of technique to see the number of people in the population that may have reactive plasma cell clones. And just for the and audience, this is mass spectrometry. Mass yeah, spectrometry. absolutely. Monoclonal proteins. Yeah. Yeah. And then following up on using the immune system, you start to have a good marker of early disease and very early disease mm -hmm. where if you could manipulate the immune system without any negative effects on the, on the patient, you could prevent the occurrence of smoldering myeloma mugus at a very early stage. And in terms of prevention, I think at some stage in the future, we're gonna to have to move to prevention because all the thing about Darwinism tells you is that you should intervene before there's a lot of complexity. And really that's where we, we should be in the future. It's futuristic, but it's possible. Let me close, uh, well, I'll just finish with one last topic here, which is um, the checkpoint inhibitors. They are revolutionizing therapy of solid tumors. And uh, Jesus, you've been uh, one of the leaders of the clinical trials. Just for the audience, can you give us a quick snapshot of what you presented today? Okay. Today we have discussed about one of the checkpoint in, uh, inhibitor, pembrolizumab, but there are several other uh, similar targeting either the PD-1 or the PDL one This is the mechanism that the cells has just to hide themselves from the attack or the control of the T cells and the NK cells. And these are, the, the tumor cells are very clever. They use this mechanism just to evade the immune control. We have now antibodies that block this receptor and allowed again the T and NK cell, the immune system, just to react against the tumor cells. And uh, we have discussed today about two combinations, one of based on Pembro plus lenalidomide and the other plus pomalidomide. And in both studies, there are pilot studies, there are preliminary data, I should emphasize this, but in both the studies, remarkable responses are being observed in patients that had been refractory to previous treatment with lenalidomide or pomalidomide. Then I think this is really encouraging again. And that's what struck me. It wasn't so much that there was a 75% response rate, but when you showed the graph of the one patient who really hadn't responded very well to anything and then had yeah. this dramatic response, was very impressive. Where do you think we'll use checkpoint inhibitors? Where, where is their natural home going to, to be? 
Well, I think uh, I think that it's ex hugely it's exciting, and uh, <laughs> I I call it an immune team. There and I go. think the imids are part of the team. I think monoclonal antibodies are part of the team. I think checkpoint inhibitors are the third part of the team. I honestly think vaccines are coming back because if they're added to one of the others, they could work now. I actually think the HDACs, because of their immunomodulatory... Histone deacetylase inhibitors. Histone deacetylase right. inhibitors. <laughs> and I also think the cellular therapies that we heard about at this meeting are extremely exciting. But we've had the opportunity, at least preclinically, to combine these two or even three of them, and extremely exciting. For example, in the vaccine trial, vaccine alone against smoldering myeloma gets a response. Add lenalidomide, you upregulate a selective response. And an HDAC or histone deacetylase inhibitor added to that, we can switch it towards a memory response. So my thought is, that we are now poised um, using an antibody to get a selective response, using a vaccine, using a cellular therapy that's programmed to react, but then to augment and sustain that response, prevent T cell exhaustion, and maybe even make it a memory response. So I think um, the answer is we're gonna be using them throughout management. I think the earliest we can use them, the better, early in smoldering myeloma to really get a good immune response that's durable. Well, thank you, gentlemen. It's been a long two days, and I appreciate you spending a bit of extra time with us. We've got 12 months to figure it out before we meet again in Edinburgh for Myeloma 2017. <laughs>